Have you ever been stabbed in the back by your own family? I have. And let me tell you, it's a pain that cuts deeper than any knife. It was a crisp autumn evening when my world came crashing down. I stood there, my hands trembling, as I watched my sister Sarah walk away with everything I'd ever worked for. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me take you back to where it all began. My name's Jennifer, Jenny to my friends. I grew up in a small town in Ohio, the kind of place where everyone knows your business before you do. Our family wasn't rich, but we got by. Mom worked as a nurse at the local hospital, and Dad ran a small hardware store downtown. Sarah was two years younger than me, always the apple of everyone's eye. From the outside, we looked like the perfect American family. But underneath, there were cracks that had been growing for years. It all started when I was 17. I had just gotten my first job at the local diner, saving up for college. I remember the day like it was yesterday. The bell above the door jingled as a customer walked in. Welcome to Joe's, I said, plastering on my best smile. Table for one. The man who walked in wasn't from around here. He wore a sharp suit that screamed Big City, his salt and pepper hair neatly combed back. He smiled at me, all white teeth and charm. Actually, I'm looking for Frank Thompson. I heard he owns the hardware store in town. My heart skipped a beat. That's my dad, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. The man's eyebrows shot up. Well, isn't that fortunate? I'm Jack Reeves, an old friend of your father's. Mind if I wait here until your shift is over? I'd love for you to introduce us. Something about his tone made me uneasy, but I nodded anyway. Little did I know, that moment would set in motion a chain of events that would tear my family apart. As I worked my shift, I couldn't help but notice Mr. Reeves watching me. His eyes followed my every move, and I felt a chill run down my spine. When my shift finally ended, I reluctantly led him to our house. Dad, I called out as we entered. There's someone here to see you. The moment my father laid eyes on Jack Reeves, the color drained from his face. It was like he'd seen a ghost. Jack, he said, his voice hoarse. What are you doing here? Mr. Reeves smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. Come now, Frank. Is that any way to greet an old friend? The tension in the room was palpable. I looked between the two men, feeling like I was missing something crucial. Jenny, why don't you go to your room? Dad said, his eyes never leaving Mr. Reeves. I hesitated, but the look on Dad's face broke no argument. As I climbed the stairs, I heard their voices, low and urgent. You can't be here, Jack. We had a deal. Deals changed, Frank, and I think it's time we renegotiated ours. I pressed my ear against my bedroom door, straining to hear more, but their voices had dropped to whispers. Little did I know that conversation would be the beginning of the end for our family. Over the next few weeks, I noticed changes in Dad. He was distracted, jumpy even. The hardware store started closing early, and he'd disappear for hours at a time. Mom tried to ask him what was wrong, but he'd brush her off with a forced smile and a quick kiss. One night, I overheard them arguing in hushed tones. Frank, what's going on? You're never home anymore. The store's losing money. Please talk to me. It's nothing, Linda. Just some business troubles. I'll sort it out. Business troubles? Frank, we've been married for 20 years. I know when you're lying to me. There was a long pause and then I heard Dad sigh. I'm sorry, Linda. I never meant for any of this to happen. I crept back to my room, my mind racing. What was Dad hiding? And what did it have to do with Jack Reeves? As the days went by, the atmosphere in our house grew more and more tense. Sarah seemed oblivious, wrapped up in her own world of high school drama and boys. But I could see the strain on Mom's face, the way Dad's shoulders slumped when he thought no one was looking. Then came the night that changed everything. I was studying from my sats when I heard a crash downstairs. Jumping to my feet, I raced down to find Dad sprawled on the floor, clutching his chest. Dad. I screamed, dropping to my knees beside him. Mom, Sarah, call an ambulance. 
The next few hours were a blur of sirens, bright lights, and antiseptic hospital smells. We huddled in the waiting room, Mom clutching Sarah and me to her sides like she was afraid we'd disappear too. When the doctor finally came out, his face was grave. Mrs. Thompson, your husband has had a massive heart attack. We've managed to stabilize him, but I'm afraid the damage to his heart is extensive. Mom's sob echoed through the sterile hallway. I felt numb, like I was watching everything happen from far away. Can we see him? Sarah asked, her voice small and scared. The doctor nodded. He's asking for Jennifer. Me? Why me? I followed the doctor down the hallway, my legs feeling like lead. When I entered Dad's room, the sight of him hooked up to all those machines made my stomach churn. Jenny, he croaked, reaching out a hand. I took it, trying not to wince at how frail it felt. I'm here, Dad. He squeezed my hand weakly. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. Dad, what? Listen to me, he interrupted, his voice urgent. In my office, behind the painting of the lighthouse, there's a safe. The combination is your birthday. I frowned, confused. Dad, what are you talking about? Everything you need to know is in there. Promise me, promise me you'll make it right. Before I could ask what he meant, his eyes rolled back and the machines started beeping wildly. Nurses rushed in, pushing me out of the way. Dead. I screamed, but strong arms were pulling me out of the room. The last thing I saw was a nurse starting chest compressions. The next few days passed in a haze of grief and confusion. Dad survived, but barely. The doctors said he'd need round-the-clock care, that he might never fully recover. As we struggled to come to terms with our new reality, I couldn't shake Dad's words from my mind. What was in that safe? And what did he mean by make it right? It wasn't until after the funeral that I finally worked up the courage to look. Mom was heavily sedated, Sarah was staying with friends, and I was alone in the empty house that no longer felt like home. With shaking hands, I moved the painting in Dad's office. Sure enough, there was a small safe behind it. I punched in my birthday, and the door swung open with a soft click. Inside was a thick mandala envelope. My heart pounding, I opened it and began to read. What I found inside made my blood run cold. Apparently, Dad's old friend, Jack Reeves, wasn't a friend at all. He was a loan shark from Dad's past, someone he'd borrowed money from years ago to keep the hardware store afloat during rough patch. But the interest rates were astronomical, and Dad had never been able to pay it back fully. For years, he'd been making minimum payments, barely keeping his head above water. But recently, Reeves had come back, demanding full payment or else. The or else was spelled out in chilling detail. He'd take the store, the house, everything we had. But that wasn't even the worst part. As I dug deeper into the documents, I uncovered a web of lies and deceit that made my head spin. Dad had been cooking the books at the hardware store for years, inflating profits and hiding losses. He'd taken out second and third mortgages on our house without Mom's knowledge. There were even hints of some shady dealings with local politicians to secure contracts for the store. My father, the man I'd looked up to my whole life, was a fraud. I sat there on the floor of his office, surrounded by the evidence of his deception, and felt my world crumbling around me. What was I supposed to do with this information? How could I possibly make it right, like Dad had asked? As if in answer to my unspoken question, there was a knock at the door. Hastily shoving the documents back into the safe, I went to answer it. Standing on our porch, looking as smooth and dangerous as ever, was Jack Reeves. Hello, Jennifer, he said, his smile not reaching his eyes. I think it's time you and I had a little chat. I stood frozen in the doorway, my mind racing. Should I let him in? Call the police? Run? Before I could decide, he pushed past me into the house. Nice place, he said, looking around with an appraising eye. Shame about your old man. Heart attack, was it? Stress can be a killer. The casual way he said it made my skin crawl. What do you want, Mr. Reeves? He turned to face me, all pretense of friendliness gone. I want what's owed to me, girl. 
your father made some promises, and I'm here to collect. I don't know what you're talking about. I lied, my heart pounding so loud, I was sure he could hear it. Reeves laughed, a harsh, humorless sound. Oh, I think you do. Frank may be laid up in that hospital bed, but I'm willing to bet he spilled the beans before he checked out. So let's cut the crap, shall we? Where's the money? I swallowed hard, trying to keep my voice steady. There is no money, Mr. Reeves. The store's barely staying afloat, and with Dad's medical bills. Don't bullshit me. He snarls suddenly right in my face. I could smell his expensive cologne, see the flecks of grey in his cold eyes. Your old man's been skimming off the top for years. I want my cut, and I want it now. I took a step back, my hands shaking. I swear, I don't know anything about any money. Please, just leave us alone. We're barely holding it together as it is. Reeves studied me for a long moment, then his face split into a cruel smile. All right, let's say I believe you. That still leaves us with a problem, doesn't it? Your daddy owes me a lot of money, and someone's got to pay up. He reached out, twirling a strand of my hair around his finger. I finished away, feeling sick. Pretty girl like you, I'm sure we could work something out. Get out, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Get out of my house right now, or I'm calling the police. Reeves held up his hands in mock surrender, but his eyes were hard. All right, all right, I'm going. But this is Nerva Jennifer. Not by a long shot. You've got one week to come up with the money, or I start taking things. And trust me, you don't want to know what I'll take first. With that ominous threat hanging in the air, he left. As soon as the door closed behind him, I collapsed to the floor, my whole body shaking with sobs. What was I going to do? How could I possibly fix this mess Dad had created? As I sat there, trying to pull myself together, I heard a noise from upstairs. Footsteps. But that was impossible. I was alone in the house. Hello. I called out, my voice trembling. Is someone there? More footsteps than silence. Gathering what little courage I had left, I grabbed a kitchen knife and crept up the stairs. The sounds were coming from Sarah's room. Heart pounding, I pushed open the door. There, standing by the window with a backpack slung over her shoulder, was my sister. Sarah? I gasped. What are you doing here? I thought you were staying at Melissa's. She whirled around, her eyes wide with surprise, and was that guilt. Jenny. I had just came to get some clothes. I didn't think anyone would be home. But something was off. The backpack looked stuffed full, and Sarah was fidgeting nervously, not meeting my eyes. What's really going on, Sarah? I asked, taking a step closer. And don't lie to me. I've had enough lies to last a lifetime. Sarah's face crumpled, and suddenly she was crying. I'm sorry, Jenny. I'm so, so sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. A cold feeling settled in my stomach. What are you talking about? What did you do? Between sobs, Sarah told me a story that made my head spin. Apparently, she'd overheard Dad talking to Reeves months ago. Curious, she'd done some digging and discovered Dad's secret stash of money, cash he'd been skimming from the store for years. I took some, she admitted, her voice small. Just a little at first. For clothes, makeup, stuff Mom and Dad would never buy me. But then? Then what? I prompted, dreading the answer. Sarah looked up at me, her eyes pleading. I met this guy, Tommy. He said he could double the money if I invested it with him. I thought. I thought I could replace what I took and have extra left over. But it was a scam. He took everything and disappeared. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. How much, Sarah? How much should you take? She whispered a number that made my blood run cold. It was more than enough to cover Dad's debt to Reeves, with plenty left over. But my God, I breathed. Do you have any idea what you've done? Sarah's face crumpled. I'm sorry, Jenny. I was going to run away, start over somewhere new. I can't face Mom and Dad. They'll hate me. Part of me wanted to shake her, to scream at her for being so stupid and selfish. But looking at her tear-stained face, I saw the scared little girl 
who used to crawl into my bed during thunderstorms. I took a deep breath, trying to think. Okay, okay, we can fix this. We have to fix this. But you can't run away, Sarah. We're in this together now. What are we going to do? She asked, her voice small and scared. I thought about the safe in Dad's office, about Jack Reeves and his threats. About Mom, devastated and alone at the hospital. About Dad, who'd asked me to make things right. I don't know, I admitted. But we'll figure it out. That's what family does. Little did I know, those words would be put to the test in ways I could never have imagined. The next few weeks would push us to our limits, testing the bonds of family and forcing us to confront ugly truths about ourselves and each other. But that night, as Sarah and I sat on her bed, holding each other and trying to come up with a plan, I made a silent vow. No matter what it took, I would protect my family, even if it meant making deals with devils like Jack Reeves. The next morning dawned grey and dreary, matching my mood perfectly. Sarah and I had stayed up most of the night, trying to come up with a plan. We were no closer to a solution, but at least I'd convinced her not to run away. As I stumbled downstairs to make coffee, my mind was a whirlwind of worry. How are we going to come up with the money to pay off Reeves? Should we tell Mom the truth? And what about Dad? How much did he really know about Sarah's theft? I was so lost in thought that I'd almost didn't notice the envelope that had been slipped under our front door. My name was scrawled across the front in unfamiliar handwriting. With trembling hands, I opened it. Inside was a single sheet of paper. Tick tock, Jennifer, it read. Time's running out. Meet me at the old Miller factory at midnight if you want to make a deal. Come alone, or the deal's off. Jar. My heart was pounding so hard I could barely breathe. Jack Reeves wanted to meet. Part of me knew it was a terrible idea that I should call the police or at least tell someone where I was going. But another part, the part that was desperate to protect my family at any cost, knew I had no choice. I spent the day in a haze, going through the motions of normal life while my mind raced with possibilities. What kind of deal would Reeves offer? And more importantly, what would he ask for in return? When Sarah came downstairs, her eyes red rimmed from crying, I forced a smile. A hey, sleepyhead, want some breakfast? She shook her head, collapsing into a chair at the kitchen table. How can you act so normal? She whispered. After everything, I sat down next to her, taking her hand. Because we have to, Sarah. For mom, for dad, we have to be strong. She nodded, squeezing my hand. What are we going to do, Jenny? I hesitated, debating whether to tell her about Reeve's note. In the end, I decided against it. The less she knew, the surfer she'd be. I'm working on it, I said, trying to sound more confident than I felt. Just, try to act normal, okay? Go to school, hang out with your friends, let me handle this. Sarah looked at me for a long moment, then nodded. Okay, I trust you, Jenny. Her words were like a knife to my heart. As she only knew what I was planning to do, the day crawled by at an agonizing pace. I visited Dad in the hospital, holding his hand and fighting back tears as I watched him struggle to speak. Mom was there too, looking exhausted and lost. Any news about the store? She asked as we stood in the hallway outside Dad's room. I shook my head. Not yet, but don't worry, Mom. I'm taking care of it. She smiled weakly, pulling me into a hug. What would we do without you, Jenny? You're so strong, just like your father. If only she knew how far from the truth that was. As midnight approached, I made my excuses and slipped out of the house. The old Miller factory was on the outskirts of town, a hulking ruin of brick and rusted metal. As I pulled into the empty parking lot, my headlights illuminating graffiti-covered walls, I felt a chill run down my spine. What was I doing here? This was madness. But before I could change my mind, a sleek black car pulled up beside me. The passenger door opened, and Jack Reeves stepped out. Right on time, he said, his smile cold in the moonlight. I like punctuality in a business partner. I'm not your business partner, I snapped, trying to hide my fear. 
I'm here to negotiate. Reeves laughed. Negotiate? Oh, sweetheart. You're not in a position to negotiate anything. But come on, let's talk inside. These late night meetings always make me nostalgic. He led the way into the abandoned factory, his flashlight casting eerie shadows on the walls. I followed, my heart pounding so hard I was sure he could hear it. We ended up in what must have once been an office, judging by the rotting desk in the corner. Reeves perched on the edge of it, looking for all the world like a king on his throne. So it, he said, fixing me with those cold eyes. Let's cut to the chase. Your old man owes me a lot of money. Money I know for a fact he doesn't have. But you, you're young, ambitious. I bet you'd do just about anything to protect your family, wouldn't you? I swallowed hard. What do you want? His smile widened. Smart girl. See, I've got connections. Powerful people who owe me favors. One word from me, and you could have a bright future ahead of you. All you have to do is agree to work for me. Work for you, I repeated, my voice barely above a whisper. Doing what? Reeves waved a hand dismissively. Of oh, nothing too strenuous. Delivering packages, collecting payments. Maybe entertaining some of my associates from time to time. You're a pretty little thing, after all. The implication of his words made my stomach churn. And if I refuse, his eyes hardened. Then I take everything. The store, the house, every last penny your family has. And trust me, sweetheart, there are other ways you can pay off your daddy's debt. Much less pleasant ways. I felt like I was going to be sick. This couldn't be happening. How had my life come to this? I had any time to think, I stammered. Reeves stood up, towering over me. You've got 24 hours. After that, all bets are off. As I drove home, my mind was reeling. I couldn't do what Reeves was asking. It was unthinkable. But how else could I save my family? When I got home, I was surprised to see lights on in the living room. Sarah was sitting on the couch, waiting up for me. Where have you been? She demanded. I was worried sick. I opened my mouth to lie, to tell her I'd just gone for a drive to clear my head. But looking at her face, so full of trust and concern, something in me broke. Before I knew it, I was telling her everything. About Dad's debts, about Reeve's threats, about the horrible choice I was facing. Sarah listened in stunned silence, her face growing paler by the second. When I finished, she stood up, her hands clenched into fists. No, she said, her voice shaking with anger. No way in hell are you doing this, Jenny. We'll find another way. There is no other way. I cried. Don't you get it? This is all we have left. Sara shook her head, a determined look in her eye that I'd never seen before. No, it's not. We have each other, and we have the truth. What are you talking about? She took a deep breath. We tell Mom everything. About Dad's debts. About what I did. All of it. And then we go to the police. I stared at her in disbelief. Are you crazy? That would destroy our family. Our family's already destroyed, Jenny, Sarah shouted. But at least this way, we have a chance to rebuild. On honesty, not lies. As much as I wanted to argue, part of me knew she was right. We couldn't keep living like this, buried under secrets and lies. That night, Sarah and I sagged up talking, planning what we would say to Mom. It wasn't going to be easy, but for the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. The next morning, we sat Mom down at the kitchen table. Her face grew more shocked and devastated with each revelation, but she listened without interrupting. When we finished, there was a long, heavy silence. Then Mom did something I never expected. She laughed. It wasn't a happy laugh. It was the kind of laugh that comes when the world has gone so completely insane that there's nothing left to do but laugh or go crazy. All this time, she said, wiping tears from her eyes. All these years, I thought we were happy. I thought we were a normal, loving family. What a joke. Mom! Sarah began, reaching for her hand. But Mom pulled away. Don't, she said, her voice hard. Just, don't. I need time to process this. She stood up, 
looking older and more tired than I'd ever seen her. I'm going to the hospital. I need to talk to your father. After she left Sarah, and I sat in stunned silence. Had we done the right thing? Or had we just made everything worse? Before we could discuss it, there was a knock at the door. My blood ran cold. It had been more than 24 hours. Had Reeves come to collect? But when I opened the door, it wasn't Reeves standing there. It was Tommy, the boy who had scammed Sarah out of all that money. Hey, he said, looking nervous. Can we talk? I was about to slam the door in his face when Sarah appeared behind me. Tommy, she gasped. What are you doing here? He shifted uncomfortably. I came to apologize and to give this back. From his pocket, he pulled out a thick envelope. Sarah's eyes widened. Is that? Tommy nodded. All the money I took, plus interest. I, I couldn't live with myself, knowing what I'd done. I snatched the envelope from his hand, hardly daring to believe it. Inside was more cash than I'd ever seen in my life. How? I demanded. Where did you get this? Tommy looked down ashamed. I won big at a casino in Atlantic City. It felt like fate, you know. Like the universe was telling me to make things right. Part of me wanted to punch him for what he put us through. But a larger part was just overwhelmed with relief. With this money, we could pay off Reeves and save the store. As if summoned by my thoughts, a sleek black car pulled up in front of our house. Jack Reeves stepped out, his face thunderous. Time's up, sweetheart, he called out. Have you made your decision? I looked at Sarah, then at Tommy. In that moment, I knew what I had to do. Stepping out onto the porch, I held up the envelope. I have your money, Mr. Reeves. All of it, plus interest. His eyes widened in surprise, then narrowed suspiciously. Where did you get that kind of cash? I smiled, feeling truly confident for the first time in weeks. That's none of your business. The debt's paid. Now get off our property before I call the police. For a moment, I thought he might argue. But something in my face must have convinced him I was serious. With a final glare, he got back in his car and drove away. As I watched his taillights disappear down the street, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. We weren't out of the woods yet. There was still so much to deal with, so many broken pieces to put back together. But for the first time in a long time, I felt hope. Sarah came up beside me, sipping her hand into mine. What now? she asked. I squeeze her hand. Now we start over. Together. The road ahead wouldn't be easy. There would be tough conversations, painful truths to face. But as I stood there with my sister, watching the sun rise on a new day, I knew we'd get through it. Because that's what family does. Even when they stab you in the back, even when they lie and betray you, in the end, family is all we've got. And sometimes, just sometimes, it's enough.